peer review process is very essential component of journal publishing yes yes we have to recruit a referee for the articles yes referring referees in real terms who is going to oversee our articles and as judge our uh, contributions criticize of the articles based on the um, ideas presented there the referee will be looking into the grammar syntax and also the content matter of the article yeah it is the journal or book publisher the task of pip, uh, picking reviewers typically falls to an editor in the journal house i mean exactly so manuscripts arrives editor solicits review from scholars and experts in the field editors select authors input selecting referees because academic writing typically is very specialized so they work with the academicians and pick up a good review um, com and people who are relevant to that field okay exactly so there are different types of uh, and styles of review process right sir can you explain this double blind we review we have a blind double blind review also a single blind review yeah yeah where uh, the author will not be knowing who the reviewers are and the reviewers will not be knowing who the authors are in other words both the parties will not be knowing each other and therefore the review will be very very objective objective that is the, how the standard review process works but uh, there won't this be any author bias and there won't be any um, uh, reviewer bias by so this is what mostly they call it humanities um, humanities division relies on double blind review a lot than the hard science people okay so let's go to the next very essential component is the conflict of interest in reviewers and authors what is that sir in this case sometimes the reviewer and author have a disproportionate amount of uh, respect or disrespect disrespect for each other let us uh, explain it this way supposing a particular article has come from a particular institution the reviewer may have a kind of a halo effect for the institution and overlook certain errors also that is why conflict of interest is very very important uh, uh matter in uh, terms of review yeah you would see this ci component there when you are uh, logging in okay or submitting your article or coming for uh, uh, review purpose okay please go to the go to it check it and please write down um if there is any conflict of interest to the yes. editors conflict of interest should be declared okay so then going to the next one is the pre publication reviews there are many types of reviews one is pre publication and most some of them there are post publication reviews we are not uh, going to take a post publication review now okay in pre publication there are many varieties one is anonymous peer review it is also known as blind review it's okay so it's single blind kind of okay single blind in the sense um the editor and the author may know who is going to review something like that so here in anonymous peer review also called blind review is a system of pre publication peer review for scientific articles or papers for journals and academic conference so that the review will be very very objective and there won't be any element of subjectivity entering into it exactly so the, in some cases the reviewers do not know the author's identity as any id identifying information is stripped from the document before okay. review that's that, why that is why we expect the authors to submit their identities in a separate sheet of paper so that that will be removed when it is sent for uh, review so please check that it is always available before submitting the document i mean go through that uh, document in the submission process there would be a link for this okay thanks let's go to the next one it's called the attributed peer review it is uh, mostly related to scientific literature the concept process settled to with the various transparency and disclosure of the identities of those review in scientific publication okay. in other words this is a departure from and alternative to incumbent anonymous peer review in which non disclosure of the identities towards the public and towards the authors of the work under review in other words by default the author should not be knowing who the reviewer Yes, exactly. and the reviewer should not be knowing who the author Authors. is. Authors, that is the whole idea, so yes, that exactly. people can be um, uh, objectively doing the review process without getting influenced by emotions. Okay. Yes, yes. So peer review and plagiarism very essential part where everybody has to know, or there is uh, we should not fall into the spit hole of plagiarism. How 
can be handled this unfortunately the peer reviewer does not have access to all the raw data which are gone into making the article or the research paper uh, here the author the person who is submitting the article should take extra care not to pull out data from some other previously published article if he pulls out data from previously published article it may not be known to the peer reviewer but when it is published the whole world will see and those who have contributed that particular data content will be definitely knowing it is infringing on the um, property pro ipr property, intellectual, IP, property, intellectual right. property right yeah. so, so this is getting so, very bad nowadays yes, as you rightly yes, mentioned yes. people have, today in this internet world it's few seconds job to find out yes, yes, so yes. please please take care of this you, you cannot say that my junior had done it sorry no sorry will not uh, be sufficient in this case here is where the peer review persons honors is on with the peer review person please uh, we will review that and help the author and identifying this not intentional plagiarism may be unintentional copies okay but if you have to copy something there is a way of giving a reference to that material alternatively reword it in such a way that it does not reflect the exact text or exact data which had been published earlier uh, what so is published once should not be republished again exactly. in professional uh, journals but still the idea is better to give citation to that article hence our your uh, i mean perspective about uh, your uh, yourself your articles your journal as well as to the institution goes up okay and don't forget that textual plagiarism is what it is concentrated here the fr the data fraudulent data some people making up some data to come up with an article is highly deplorable deplorable and somebody points out and catches it won't be good for the future career okay so please take extra concern about that plagiarism we will have another uh, example based session later there is another one abuse of insider information by reviewers something equivalent to a plagiarism but little different actually it is uh, stealing the intellectual uh, uh, rights of somebody else a for example or an institution for, for, for example a student had submitted an article to the reviewer reviewer may take a portion of the student's article and publish it before the student's article is published now people will be having the idea or feeling that uh, student has stolen from this uh, article actually yes. it is vice versa yeah it, that's a one good place where e journals.co will help you because we will have all the information right from the moment you sub the author submitted the journal and the reviewer when it was went in for reviewing everything is so, documented and logged inside the system so who has submitted first and who had submitted second can very easily be verified, verified. and therefore we can avoid abuse of inside information by reviewers great so going to the third one i mean open peer review the final one here is very important one um instead of being blind reviews the world and the uh, there is a magazine called lancet nature a lot of people are pi pioneering this new idea called open peer review why not the author and the uh, review were know each other in the sense here, here there is a total transparency and there is a disclosure of identities still we believe that the peer reviewer as well as the author will be uh, maintaining their professional objective standards standards not only that they naturally they should be from different part of the uh, geographical area or known knowing area something like that okay that's ethics we hope they follow the ethics there is one more which is called the medical peer review this is nothing to do with the uh, journal as such no, the medical that's peer review is for true. medical journal and clinical peer review is not for journal so journal. maybe this gets confused with uh, clinical peer review Pe clinical peer review is what you were uh, talking about um, in other words internal there, there, there evaluatory will clinical, methods there will be clinical conferences where a particular patient's uh, history will be reviewed and later on in the clinical peer review all the peers will sit together and review about uh, the patient patient's condition 
and all the things that go with the particular uh, illness. Yes, now, exactly. In medical peer review, you have journal articles to a secondary round of peer review exactly. for the clinical value of articles concurrently published in medical journals. So, medical peer review goes with medical journals. And clinical peer review goes with the clinical expertise clinical enhancement per and practice. performance enhancement. Please do not confuse these two. Medical peer review is for the journals, journals and clinical peer journals. review for the practitioners and in practice. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. Let's discuss more about this in a good conference setup and come out with more ideas. Bye for now. Thanks for sharing your ideas, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye.